Hey, LT, there's a panic room inside the garage, downstairs underneath the garage. Yeah, he says you it's kind of it's downstairs and it's underneath one of the garages, and he's calling it a safe room. He says he said something about Fort Knox, so I don't know if it has a Fort Knox door or safe on it, but that's what he's talking about. Temple, okay, we've got it, but we can't get into it. Hello everyone, my name is Jessica and welcome back to my channel. This video is, yes, deep in the topics that are talked about, just like rehashed, but the intro here is just my sweet, sweet victory. If you don't know, I started in commentary talking about the Ruby Frankie and Jody Hillebrand case and I got a membership to broadcastify.com, which is a dispatch worldwide website that stores live and then archived up to 365 days of police dispatch with you know, EMS, police, all that sort of stuff. But it varies per dispatch in like cities and whatever, what is going to be on there. Like for this last case I just covered, there was like nothing on it. But for Ruby Frankie's case, there was plenty. And I'm the one who recorded and put out there the panic room information and then it got debunked, you know, a million times. And there were two channels who shared my information. The first one was the Dad Challenge podcast, which I am so thankful that he reacted to it. I'm blind reacting to this, just so you guys are aware. I don't know what you're supposed to say. Um, after the call that Russell made up until like just a couple hours, I went through so much stuff. There's a panic room inside the garage. Oh shit, there it is. There it is. There's a panic room inside the garage. The reason why I'm doing this video today is because my husband was like, hey, did you see the video Josh posted? And I was like, no, because I've been looking at with this um, Savannah and Matthew case. So then I looked into it and I was like, oh my God, <laughs> this is this is my vindication and my personal assumption. Anytime anyone posted on the Reddit, they were told like, this is a lie. It's been debunked. It was from another call, blah, blah. Like what are the chances in such a small community? There's two raids. It doesn't make any sense. And I heard what I heard. Like I listened to over 10 hours of dispatch and I was talking about it. I know a lot, but many people said stuff. And then past the Pascal show, I don't really know him other than when he shared my stuff, I came across his and then he didn't credit me until I commented and then people were like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And then he credited me in the um, description box, which I'm happy that he did that, obviously. Um, and then I made a video about Jordan and McKay and people, they're, I think, ex-Mormons or maybe they're Mormons, but people were all mad at me for doing that video, like who were obviously fans of them, like mega fans of them. And I was brand new. I literally just crossed a thousand subscribers um, at the very beginning of this case. Before that, I had like 980. It got me just over that threshold. People were commenting that like they didn't omit stuff, blah, blah, blah. And like they also said the panic room wasn't real, but it's so weird. Like, like how Josh said in his video, it's really annoying when there's only one narrative allowed to be pushed. It's what I realized with like any true crime or anything there's only one narrative allowed because the almighty mods or whoever they are decide that this is the narrative that needs to be pushed yes for example in the last case i covered when i brought up someone who inserted herself into the story so far it looks like she's not involved that's okay because conversation is good to happen but when conversation is shut down that's when you should really question it so uh <laughs> i feel amazing that jody's house jody hildebrand's house is for sale and freaking look look at this we're getting into it we're getting into it. I'm going to share my past videos in this video because I have more subscribers than I did before. And um, I feel like people obviously didn't look back at my previous videos. They're done a little bit differently now compared to back then. But I feel freaking good. And the reason why I'm talking about this too is because with the Savannah Soto and Matthew Guerrero, I can't pronounce it very as well as it should, as it should be. Um, I covered that from the beginning in terms of like breaking down the theories and everything like that. But the Jody Hildebrand case, because they're public figures, like as in like had a massive social media presence, it was really, it took effort to find stuff, but like it was different, you know, and also they're like really old compared to these young kids. Like they had a lot of life lived. So there's a lot online about them. I want you guys to, by doing this videos, not just be like, haha, internet, I'm right. And screw all you people who didn't believe in me. <laughs> I wanted to, this video to show you the level of effort I put into my research and why I think it's really important to put factual information out there as much as possible. With a live case happening, it's a little bit harder to do that, of course, because it takes longer to vet and things are moving fast and everything like that. And all these other creators can go live and I don't have that ability. And in some ways, like the way Dad Challenge does it, I like how he does it because he does like lives every so often. And then he puts an effort for like actual good content that's produced where most of these channels talking about true crime you know they all do lives because it's easy and to me it's lazy it takes effort to do research and 
chronological order and do all that stuff, that's not easy. It takes a long time to edit, to break down, you know, overlays. It, it, it takes a lot of effort. Maybe it doesn't appear that way, but I know that there's people in the comments who say to me all the time, like, wow, look at all this work you put into it. And I'm like, thank you for noticing that because it does take effort. And you know, this is why I decided to just be like full commentary. I decided to be full commentary because I realized there's a gap in the market, so to speak. There are, yes, really great people, but True Crime, for example, is a different kind of community. There's a lot of people who like just do summaries, which is amazing. I love like Kendall Ray, for example, but I wanna be the person in like commentary. So not just talking about true crime, but any type of commentary who kind of fills in the holes because I realize that sometimes we're not to told the full picture. I'm like, what happens if I didn't decide to get into Ruby Frankie and Jody Hildebrand case? Then when her house became for sale, they'd be like, whoa, what is that? And someone would be like, oh, it's just an end of days thing, you know? But it created this buzz and this bigger like, oh my God, what the hell were they up to? because that information was out there. So whenever I can get information like that out there, I'm gonna do it. Um, and I really enjoy doing it. I'm gonna keep talking about topics I enjoy, but this is lighthearted a little bit. Obviously I'm gonna go into deep stuff, like talking about Russell and everything that happened there and sharing my past videos in this video, like I already said. And then I am, I know I've said this before, <laughs> but I am working on an okay baby video. Um, I was just really wanting to look at this true crime stuff because it was like happening right now, but I honestly need a break from that. I could never be a full true crime channel. It's so heavy. Uh, it takes a lot of work and also there's a lot of people who are very opinionated on the topics and I know there would be in like the family vlogging world like talking about those people too but um, I enjoy if you enjoy my perspective on things um, I really appreciate you being here and then I know people are not going to agree with me but if you enjoy consider subscribing I really thank you to everyone who subscribed it feels so good to know that the effort I'm putting in is being well received it feels really good I've always been someone who's really into research I enjoy it so much but now there's like a benefit for me because I'm able to produce content that I really love and one day when I can get like a really good computer and all that kind of stuff I can do probably even more better amazing editing but right now believe it or not I just edit on my phone I record on my Canon camera right now I'm talking to you guys through my Canon and then I record everything on my phone like right now you can see I have this voice memo if anyone is interested in my setup and what I do uh, let me know I am considering once I hit like that six months of being monetized I want to do a video sharing the equipment that I use how I got monetized like all this kind of stuff because I think it is beneficial because it'd be really great if there's just like more people out there because it seems like like when before I started doing commentary I thought this market was really saturated but then doing it I'm like it's not like there has to be people of all personality types and all research types and whatever because then you get a full well-rounded picture in what's happening in the world and I really enjoy that and as Josh shared in his video talking about Jody Hildebrandt's panic room in Canada, we don't see the news on social media. We can see it on YouTube, but we can't see it on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, we can see it when people do it on TikTok, but we're really limited. So uh, I think you're going to see a huge rise more so in Canadian creators getting online, talking about stuff. And I really enjoy that. So anyways, this is kind of an intro, but more like the video, you know, sorry, I didn't really do an intro this time, but thanks guys for being here. And uh, actually it's kind of like an intro, but it's like, whatever. It's okay to do a, a long intro sometimes. Sorry, I have my hair down and it's kind of weird for me. Like it's freshly washed and I'm the type of person who has, it doesn't matter, who cares? Let's get into this. <laughs> okay, so first I wanna share for you guys the original Panic Room audio so you know what I'm even freaking talking about. If you don't know, I guess I should have said is that Jody Hildebrandt and Ruby Frankie. Ruby Frankie was a former family vlogger of the Eight Passengers YouTube channel. Jody Hildebrandt was her business partner with like mental fitness, life coaching. <laughs> Welcome to Connections. I'm Ruby Frankie. I'm Jody Hildebrandt. And we are wrapping up our series of denial tactics or tactics of deception. So if you have not watched the rest of the videos, be sure and subscribe and go watch the playlist because there are, I believe we did 17 tactics of deception and being really familiar with these is going to help you stay living in truth living in the truth. And so the last one we're talking about is this belief of unique and different. Feeling like you're unique and different, in order to understand this in distortion, I want to separate first. A person has, I, we do have unique talents. There are unique skills that maybe I have that, that you don't, and you have unique She's a really great speller and I'm constantly asking her how to spell. <laughs> I believe she's unique in, in the fact that she is absolutely phenomenal in knowing the English language and being able to, there's not a word I brought up that she doesn't know what the meaning is. I'll open the dictionary to any random word. I'm like, she doesn't, she didn't know this word. I'm like, what is this? And she, she knows the definition. They got arrested 
August 30th on child abuse charges and are now awaiting to be sentenced in February, I believe. Yeah, February 20th is their sentencing. They have both pled guilty to four out of the six charges as part of their plea deal. Uh, two each of their charges were dismissed. In that panic room audio is the panic room discovery, and uh, I'll play that for you so that you can see. Eight Alpha 6 will be upstairs on the second floor. Copy, do you have a unit number? 12 XO 11, I think I may have found Dad also a Kevin Frankie address out of Springville. Oh, oh, that's can I get a call from each other house on Walker? And also a vehicle search on Jody. She's showing a white Lexus ES today. Show 12 XO 11, can you hold the air? We're searching the house. Hey, LT, there's a panic room inside the garage. Downstairs, underneath the garage. Yeah, he says you, it's kind of it's downstairs and it's underneath one of the garages, and he's calling it a safe room. He says he said something about Fort Knox, so I don't know if it has a Fort Knox door or safe on it, but that's what he's talking about. Temple, okay, well, we've got it, but we can't get into it. My guess is that would be where they're at. He says it's a large room, it's a panic room. This one says Liberty Safe Company, it's got a big wheel on the front. I'm at the front door. On this case that we're working, we have the custodial parent of the child in the ER. She just came to our PD and then she took off when we said cops will talk to her in a second. So we're hoping maybe someone can go to the, or the cop at the ER can restrict access from her to her kids. That's something you can relate to them. Her name is Ruby and her name should be in CAD comments. Just confirming this needs to be relayed to 12X9, who I'm showing it. St. George Regional or at the St. George officer who's there? The St. George officer that's there. 10 4. He's on scene, we're executing search warrant. Mom is walking up to the house right now. 17, who's walking up to the house? Other of the tiles. Control 12 x we will be 84 with Ruby, the children's mother. Okay, so as you heard, that is the panic room audio. So here on the deed, you can see that Jody first bought her piece of land in K. Enta Ivans in 2013. I have a hard time pronouncing the name because I cannot find the pronunciation online, so please forgive me. What I really want to highlight here is the fact that Cayenta is, Cayente, whatever, is not a torture community. It is actually a really beautiful community, so I don't want it to get a bad name. I want to show how beautiful the architecture is. It was built on Native American land, and they really want to respect that in their development of all the properties. So with the materials that they use, and they use mud a lot of the time I learned, I'm gonna do more of a deeper dive into this community, but I just want to show you that it is actually very beautiful from the outside. It looks kind of creepy, kind of dystopian, people think, but they are built the way that they are because of how hot it is in the desert. So this is a private community in which they use certain builders and certain companies that you have to use if you're going to live within their community, which is pretty standard when you live in a private community like this. I think it's like an OHA or something, whatever it's called is, that everything is done within that community and there's rules and regulations that you have to follow when you live within that community. This is just a random house I found within this construction company's YouTube channel, which I'll link below. But yeah, it's very interesting. You can see all the development of the properties here. Next up is a creator who shared that she was in contact with a contractor for Jody's house in which she put in the panic and safe room while her house is being built. I just spoke with someone who knows Jody Hildebrand personally. He worked as a contractor on her house in Kayanta where all this went down in Ivins, Utah. Then there's a safe room in that house, a panic room, is because she was working up in Salt Lake as some sort of a counselor. She made this guy really mad, this guy that's off his rocker, and he started stalking her. And so she picked up her life and moved to St. George and built this house and she had this panic room built into the house because she had a stalker. That's the reason for the panic room. So to verify this, you could see the Casita Agreement. So this is something that she applied for in 2016. So three years after she had originally bought the land is about an addition onto your house. You have to apply for this permit. I first looked up the permits within her zip code and uh, she actually never applied for 
any permits after her house was built. So she did all of this in the original construction. This is not necessarily proof that she does have a safe slash panic room, but it does prove that she did apply for an addition to her house, specifically states that a casita can be behind or under the garage. So take that for what you want. This is all just a ledge and just my personal opinion based on the findings, but I do believe that she did apply for it in 2016 and it was a part of the construction of the house, which corroborates with that creator who said that she spoke with a contractor who said that they put it in. And I believe the contra contractor was one of those companies that was listed on the Cayenta website. Like I said earlier, panic slash safe rooms are not common where we live necessarily, but they are clearly common in the state of Utah. So this is just three of like many, many, many companies within that state. Also, you can uh, hire a company outside of the state to then deliver to your state. So there's a lot of options for panic, safe, bunker rooms, whatever you want to call them. This next thing is a 3D rendering from one of those companies of what it could look like underneath your house if you were to have one of these additions. It's very interesting. It looks kind of like a prison cell, hey, but it doesn't mean they all look like this, but they do build them for like all types of weather, natural disasters, nuclear bombs, like th they want them to withstand that. So this is what one of those places looks like. I just can't imagine if Jody's looks anything like this. It does look so creepy and probably similar to what they're in right now. <laughs> and this is where we hop into the Fort Knox part of the audio. So I'll link the YouTube below where I got this from, but they are installing a Fort Knox vault door into this underground area in this house. So this is showing that from a new build, what you can do in order to install one of these. So in the audio, it was mentioned a Fort Knox door and then a Liberty safe. So you can also have that within your thing, but this is just what I found online on the YouTube. Channel. Now I'm going to show you Jody's house and then maybe overlay just a little bit of the uh, dispatch audio that you just heard, just the specific finding is that it was said that it was under the garage or behind the garage that they were. And Hey, LT, there's a panic room inside the garage, downstairs, underneath the garage. And as we can see, there's two levels going down. There's the normal downstairs, and then there's another further downstairs, which is where the safe room, panic room is. It's not necessarily that, like, obviously, torture did happen there because of the charges. It is awful. But we have to know and acknowledge that this place did exist. And yeah, her house is for sale now, but this did exist. We can't just be like, oh, because I think, because the Reddit said, you know, like these things that people are acting like, they're actually doing the children a disservice by saying it's not real. To say it's real is acknowledging all the shit that they went through in that house and why Jody and Ruby should actually get more time. Like this is absolutely insane. I hope that Jody and Ruby are stupid enough to go back on their plea deal and do an appeal or something and then go to trial because they deserve to get more time, you know, longer than that. I don't even know if that's possible because I know second degree felonies, it's a 30 year max. Um, so I've been seeing more online again. Uh, that is six years. It's not true. It's actually Utah law that is 30 years max, no matter how many charges they have against them. In, in Utah, there's a the maximum penalty for second degree felonies is 30 is 30 years. So if we had 15 counts, the, the maximum amount of time would have been 30 years. Um, so yeah, this is interesting. And then now I want to go into Russell. So the thing that I saw, I was listening to Josh's podcast last night while falling asleep. He said that Russell is a hero and people need to remember that and no one's talking about it. Well, interesting enough, in fe September, I actually did a video and on the thumbnail, I said, he's the hero of it all. I want to play that video for you again, which details where he walked and how far he walked. He was actually, you know, like he went to his neighbor's house really close. Like he, their neighbors are actually super close. It's not that far apart. And the neighbor he went to was like across the street. It was just down a little bit across the street. So I'm going to show you this in this video. And then we'll come back and I'll show you the um, listing information to show you where exactly the house was on there. Because I did the best I could with the information I had at the time because Jody's house wasn't on Google maps or whatever. Like as in like the aerial shots and stuff, it was blocked. Like you couldn't walk any further on the Google maps thing. So I'll play that video for you now. What I really want to get into today and really highlight is the hero of today's story or of the story, which is Russell Frankie. I feel like the part of the story that we're all kind of forgetting is how much of a hero that Russell is. Like, yes, you hear that he was malnourished and had deep lacerations, went to a neighbor's house and that was that, and, you know, he's amazing. No, I was looking into it and you know, he's a lot more of a hero, a lot bigger of a hero than we even realize. And I want to share why and how with you today. So around 1050 hours that there was a dispatched um, incident for officers to respond to the area of Kayenta inside the Ivan city boundaries. And when we arrived, we learned that there was a juvenile that was 
knocking on doors asking for food and water, requesting help from from citizens. In one of those interactions, a citizen noticed there was duct tape on the child's wrist as well as open wounds. Okay, did you guys catch the detail there? He went knocking on the doors of doors so plural of citizens asking for food and water and then the reporter said on one of those interactions is when they noticed that he had deep lacerations and duct tape so he went to more than one house Lex 17 it looks like if you're at the rp's address off uwan drive looking out the front go left it's going to be your first house on tagu court on the right So based on that call, I learned that the house that made the call was over here because of the names of Uwan Drive versus the ones that go off of the drive. Their little complex is not even available on Google Maps, even though it's not a brand new neighborhood. It started in 2013. So this is the house that was on this like realtor website and the house I'm going to right now there, that is Jody's house. Sorry if you can hear my baby, I have no other time to record and she's just crawling on the floor, but that is Jody's house right there. And then I'm gonna zoom out here in a second to show you that is indeed a complex. So, and having to do with that call that he uh, went to multiple houses, his house is right there. And then the one with the little green thing, that is the house from the realtor website. And the one across the way with this pool, that is directly across from their house. So I know it's all speculation on my part, but like I would think he would go to the house right across the drive at least first. I feel like he went to one to two houses before based on that. Uh, interview on that news site and then right there across the way that is the neighbor who made the call for 911 and then there's Jody's house I'll zoom in a little bit later but this is the neighbor who made the call her actress is blocked on Google Maps and then that right there the house on the right here that is the house with the pool so I wanted to show you the distance that he walked yes it's like not insanely long but it is very long for a kid who's been malnourished and had deep lacerations and it was hot outside so this is Uwan Drive and that right there is the house. So then if you look ahead at this long road, if you zoom all the way in the what I'm doing right now, that is Jody's house with the brick right there and that white truck outside. That's actually on another video, like a drone footage of this community here. And then that is the neighbor's house, the pool. So he walked such a long way. He has so much determination and I can't even believe that he was able to do this in the state that he was in. This is what I'm saying is that he is so much bigger of a hero than we have ever realized. I feel like if it were me, I would have given up after like one or two houses, especially at that distance. Like he must have been looking back, fearful that he was gonna get caught. Like I can't even imagine. So what I want us to all remember is that yes, uh, Ruby and Jody were extremely harmful to these children, but we also have to remember the only good that came out of this is that they were rescued from their brother. And this is partly a hero story. Okay, so as you saw there, he walked quite a distance. And because of the 911 call, we could see where he walked, like what the name of the Uwan Drive is. Now I'm going to overlay where Jody's house is. And as you can see here, her house is the one with the pool. I think they all, a lot of them have pools. But across the way, he would have had to go to that neighbor. You would think, logically speaking, he'd go to the neighbor right across the way. And then he came down further and then out and then walked to that neighbor's house who was the only one who noticed. And like I said in my video that I did talking about Russell is that uh, it said he went to multi like neighbors, you know? So he did not give up. And I swear I saw something, I'm gonna have to find the article or wherever it was, that he actually, I think it was in the court documents of this case going on right now, is that he actually escaped one time prior and then he got caught or something like that. I feel like it's what, it, maybe I'm wrong, but if I'm not wrong, I'll insert something. But um, yeah, so he had the will and determination to get out no matter what, because if he did do it previously, he did this a second time, he went to multiple, multiple neighbors' houses and was obviously terrified to do so. I was gonna do a video on this before because I did a lot of in-depth videos on it at the very beginning. The neighbors across the way, there's one right across the way, she actually works at one of these places. Like, remember the video, if you've been watching me for a little bit now, the Becky Berry video, talking about the eating disorder clinics and stuff. This lady across the way works at one that's kind of like that wilderness camp that Chad got sent to. Um, and it's interesting. Like, I think that the male neighbor who called 911, he sounded scared, honestly. Not just like bad for Russell, but he obviously was like, he sounded scared, you know, like probably like scared what was gonna happen, but now it's all good because <laughs> Jody's in jail now and will be there for a very long time. I think it's really important. This is why I'm really, I'm really big on facts and yeah, I've made my mistakes in the past, but I think 
it's really important to report on facts and not be so emotional and be like, well, there's only one way to think and no one else can mention anything else because it does really, the victim is a disservice to do that. So I just want people to remember that. So I've said before, like, basically every video, like over the last few months, I say something different about what my channel is, but I've really just succumbed to the fact that I'm a commentary channel and I'm going to do commentary. Like I said, in the intro, it was just like this long talking on uh, what I'm going to be doing or what I'm going to be talking about in my channel. What I can say to you viewers, because now I have 7,000 subscribers, like I think that is like a massive responsibility, is that if there's a case happening that is gaining a lot of attention, as long as it doesn't include SA to children, because I will not cover that. I'm so sorry, but that will not be something I cover because it's just, it's too, I can't, I can't even find the words to say to you guys, but I just can't, I can't do that. And not that unaliving is any better, but doing that and on a line like there's just absolutely no way I could talk about that sort of thing like I have children you know it just I just I can't be that I'm not that voice on the internet and I won't I won't ever be if something is appealing to me like this case was appealing to me because she was so overdue a, a one week overdue and I bet you when that autopsy report comes back the baby's gonna be like eight or nine pounds just watch because her belly was like massive sometimes I can't get videos out right away because like I've shared before I'm a stay-at-home mom to two young kids and it's uh if you have your mom, you know that's a lot of work. So I try my best to fit it in. And my husband really sees it valuable that I am doing YouTube now. Um, so I guess I'm, I can be technically called a work from home mom, but I would say like a part time because I don't put anywhere near like the full time hours, like consistent as in like I do a lot into the deep of the night, like four in the morning, you know, um, which I'm so exhausted outside of my baby not sleeping. <laughs> I do love this. I love it so much. And I thank you guys uh, for subscribing and making it possible for me to do this because it helps to see like monetary value results or whatever in what I'm doing and so I really appreciate it so I've really contemplated doing a giveaway once I get to 10,000 subscribers I'm not sure what the giveaway will be um, I'm not rolling in cash so it's not like I can do some like crazy giveaway but I just want to say thank you for her like especially like with inflation and everything going on right now in our world like you guys have really made it possible for me to try to do YouTube like this is absolutely insane to me and I don't take it lightly so I thank you for everyone who comments and who's here on my channel I can't say thank you enough so thank you so much uh, but yeah i'm gonna do a giveaway maybe it'll be like an amazon gift card like a hundred dollar amazon gift card or something or that would probably make the most sense honestly but um i'm kind of thinking i don't know what i would do but like the stipulate the only stipulations would be that you're subscribed to my channel and then you comment not on this video but like when i hit 10,000 subscribers you know that would be like the thing is what I'm thinking. But yeah. So anyways, I hope you guys had a really great New Year's. If you want to comment below, what did you guys do for New Year's? If you're curious what I did for New Year's. Me and my husband, both of our kids were asleep. We quickly ran downstairs because uh, we were both separately with the children, just like, you know, how it is having two young kids. We both ran downstairs. And we're like, happy New Year. Should we pop the Prosecco? And then we're both like, oh, we're too tired. We're not going to. We're like, so we're like, let's go to bed. So we just went to bed. Uh, that was our New Year's. And then I heard fireworks in our neighborhood as everyone always likes to set off fireworks. But I like at my age now, like I'm in my mid thirties. <laughs> Sorry if my mic was just making a weird noise. Um, I'm in my mid thirties. I don't see the value in like being in Canada. It's freezing. Like, yes, we're having seasonably warmer weather, but um, yeah. What did you guys do for New Year's? Hopefully you had a good time. Thank you again so much for being here. I appreciate you guys and I hope you're having a great day. Bye.